So we'll be, I'll be talking about self-service data integrations today, and we'll be taking a journey of uh, interactive data preparations into production-ready pipelines. So over the past couple of years, we've seen the rise of the importance of, of data science. Most, a lot of companies are now making decisions based on data, and uh, a lot more things are generating data as well. And here at CAS, we help data scientists and data engineers to solve these big data problems. And we'll see a demonstration today uh, by taking a journey as a data scientist, solving a business problem with a real business case and solve, yeah, solve, solving uh, uh, a, real, a real use case. So the problem we're tackling today is a customer happiness problem. And we know that customer satisfaction means a success for your business. A happy customer will remain your, your customer, they will keep paying you, and they will tell their friends about your product as well. They, that's free advertising for you by word of mouth, and in turn, their, their friends will tell, tell their friends, and it keeps growing and growing. On the other hand, unhappy customers don't really stick around. But the problem with unhappy customers is usually company finds out way, way too late. It, the company can't really do anything about the, the, the customers unhappy and they just stop being a customer. One great example is mailing lists, for instance, or any subscription business model where the, when, when the, the customer click on unsubscribe, they get this exit interview, right? Why did you leave? Can we do better? Uh, who, who are you turning to, uh, to to solve this particular problem? But at that point, the customer already passed the, the tipping point that they want to leave. And sure, that information is, is useful for the future of the company. But for that particular customer, you already lost them. They're, they're all, they already churned. So this is where a data scientist might come to the rescue. They can be proactive in mitigating some of these unhappy customers, find out before this customer wants to leave your, your business, and take some, some proactive measures. So we'll be looking at a fictitious company uh, named Marvel. It's a rapidly growing SaaS company with thousands and thousands of customers, and they, uh, they're growing rapidly as well. So they're adding thousands of customers every, every week. And the goal for Boggle is to prevent customer churn and keep them happy. But they want to do this with a data-driven approach. And they have a data support portal uh, where the company is interacting with the customer. Well, the customer can ask questions, they can support it, file, file support tickets, and things like that. So Boggle tasks Edwin, the data scientist, to solve this, this problem. While this is a fictitious company, a lot of companies are actually trying to solve this very same problem. So it is very much a, a real big data problem right now. So what does Edwin need to do to solve this customer happiness problem? First, Edwin needs to ingest the data from, from the data support portal. And then after the ingestion, I need to prepare the data format it in, in uh, a proper format that they can do analysis on. And finally, build a machine learning model to predict and classify whether a certain customer is actually happy or, or not. And I'm talking about some of the pain points that uh, data scientists usually face when they go through this three steps. So the first is data ingestion. Data comes from different sources, and with different sources comes different format as well. And some commonly used sources are database where you might be storing your customer's data, their payment, uh, their payment information, their SLAs, things like that. You might also have uh, a file that you store in HDFS or S3. And this file can come as an export from your CRM system or ERP system or your marketing generation. There's many different source, or with the device of IoTs and wearables, it, those, those devices might, might emit data to, to Kafka or SQS queues or many, many different, many different uh, source, sources for your data file. 
So a lot of sources, a lot of different different data formats. It can become confusing for the data scientists as to where are my, my connectors, how do I connect to these different different things, how do I query the data in, in, in these sources. So once they have figured that out, they ingested the data, the next step they, they have to do is to prepare the data. And data preparation is essentially a process of cleaning, structuring, and formatting your data so that the output of it will be consumable by either another system or it just readily, uh, they, they can run analysis directly with, with that data. And bear in mind that this data preparation step, 80% of the data scientist's time is actually spent in this data preparation. So they don't spend most of their time doing analysis, it's actually preparing the data, cleaning up the data. And because it's so important, and it takes a lot of times, we need a system that will make things easier for them. So we want a system that will come to that tape and provide a self-service in interface for the data scientists to prepare this data, right? If the data scientist uh, is proficient with, with programming, for instance, they might be able to write a, write a script to, to parse the data, clean, clean it up, maybe format some, some tags, but not maybe not all data scientists can do that. So uh, a self-service, uh, a data scientist that can't do that have to ask another developer, for instance, to, to do that processing for them. And when that's the case, there's a risk of miscommunications between the, the data scientist and the developer. The data scientist knows the, the context over, over the data, they understand the source, they understand uh, what the output should be of this data preparation. And if they have to communicate that requirements to the developer, the developer might misunderstood. And we want a system where there's there's nothing above that quote. Like the data scientist after after receiving the data, they're saying, oh that's not actually what I want. Oh, can you modify the, the small part? Oh, I forgot this small thing. And usually, you know, as the developers, you hear those things. The, the one small thing is never one small thing. It be becomes ten, and it's never actually small. It's pretty big. You have to, re you might have to rewrite your your entire script to to fix that one small thing. And that back and forth creates lag time. So, why? Does the data scientist needs to hand this, hand this problem to, to someone else to do it while they know the best about the data. So they should be able to just do it themselves. And they, if they make a mistake, they can go back and just redo it very, very easily. So after they ingested the data, they prepare the data. Now finally, they can run a machine learning uh, model model building code to create uh, some some sort of a classifier for the unhappy customer or ha happy and, uh, unhappy customer. And some of the requirements of a, a system that can handle this is that it needs to be easy to experiment because they might have to test a lot of different machine learning algorithm or di different models and measure the performance of each models and and see how the models compare to each other and pick the best one. But also as the company scales and, and grows, the historical performance of different models might be important as well because uh, let's say one algorithm works the best when the company is at X size, when they grow to become Y size, it may not be the best anymore. So it needs to, to contain that historical performance of um, of different models as well. And it should be interactive where the, the data scientists can, can see and, and monitor what is the, the result of this model model build. So here's what a solution to, to this problem might look like to, to measure a customer happiness. So we have uh, an export of uh, Zendesk support tickets, that's the support portal that contains the uh, the, the information of the solved tickets 
historical data, and they also have a, a database sitting in MySQL of their customer data, which contains the uh, organization name, uh, contact info, uh, payment type, etc. And these two things will feed into the machine learning model, where we will generate um, a machine learning model that eventually will be used to classify the, the unsolved tickets, the, the open tickets, and in turn, we'll find out from these unsolved tickets who are the happy, the happy users, who are the unhappy users. And if they're unhappy, perhaps the company will need to take some mitigation, mitigating action, such as giving them a discount, giving them uh, a call, maybe have a, have a meeting. And there's a lot of different, different ways where um, you, can, you can use this uh, machine learning, building this machine learning. You can take, for instance, the, the, the text sentiment over, over the, the ticket. You can also see the, the time it takes to, to resolve this ticket, how many back and forth, what is the severity of the tickets. There's a lot of different things you can feed into, into the machine learning model. So that's the... The, the job of the data scientists. Is my problem solved now? Not really, <clears throat> because a lot of times the, the data scientists will experiment on their local machine, on their laptop, but their solution might not actually be production ready. A data scientist might not be aware over all of the, the IT requirements or enter, enterprise grade requirements. And some of these requirements are monitoring. They need to be able to, to, to see what is, what is happening with the, with the program. They need to be able to start, stop, or schedule the, the, the program to run uh, every, every week or every month. And they also need to do some kind of security. They need to lock down who can actually run this, this, this program, who has access to certain, to certain data sets, who has access to, to the model. And also, it, when, when this is in production, and it been, it's been running for six months or a year, and then down the line, you see an error, for instance, in, in the model, then an administrator needs to be able to trace back which programs have been run against certain data sets, which, which data sets have been accessed, and that's where the lineage comes in. They need to be able to, to see the, the progressions over where's the source of the data that, that might lead to, to this error. And in, in, the same, and in the same way, they need to be able to see the, the performance metrics to monitor maybe they need to increase the cluster size, they need to give in more memory, and they need also need to see the, the logs if something goes wrong to pinpoint the, the locations of, of the air and, and fix the problem. So these are some of the enterprise grade production requirements that a data scientist might not actually be aware. So that's where CAS comes in. We have a flagship product called CEDA, stands for CAS Data Application Platform, and it's a unified integration platform for big data. It's an abstraction on top of Hadoop, and it's a, a portable solution for, for your big data applications. So you are, if you have stuff on your premise and you want to move it to the cloud, you can, you can still use CDAP with the, same, uh, with the same application code. And we support all the major distros, and we support most of the, the major technologies like Spark, Kafka, Yarn, HBase, uh, Hive, and we built all these things with security and operations in mind. So when you're writing your applications or, or data pipelines, you don't have to worry about locking down uh, security or how do I, uh, how do I monitor this, this, this program, uh, how do I keep the, the, the lineage over, over the data when you have multiple programs. You get all this because just by using the platform. And on top of that, we make uh, data integration very easy with, with your applications by having a self-service user experience. And the, the, user exp the user interface will allow you to discover, to pair, or ingest, and create data pipelines. 
so that you don't have you may not have to, to write code to, to do all this. It just becomes uh, very, very easy for you, for you to do. And on top of that, we have Cast Market, which is a repository of pre-built solutions that you can deploy into your, uh, into your environment with just a simple few clicks. So how does CF help data scientists? So let's go into the demo. And I have here the, the user interface for, for CDAP. And what we're going to do is go into the data preparation sections of CDAP. The first thing I want to do is I want to ingest uh, MySQL database data that contains my customer data into CDAP. So I need to add a connection into a database. And in here, we have a list of some, some of the, the database we support. And in this case, it's uh, MySQL. And we can name this connection uh, customers. And I have a MySQL sitting on this IP address. Put in my credentials. And let's test the connections. Successful, and now I, I need to pick the database and add connection. And you see the connections appear on, on the left hand side. So I can click on that customer's data and I see the list of tables in that database. And if you click on any of the tables, it will ingest the, the, the data. And for, for this demo, we're going to, to see the registrations data. So now we move to data preparation step. So we've ingested MySQL, MySQL data, and now we move into the, the data preparations. If you see here on the first line, it seems like that's not an actual data. Right? That, that seems like a, a, a header. So the first thing you, you might want to do is filter this record out. So I can do just click on the drop down on the header. I can click on filter, remove rows, where the value, the, the value is first. Uh, I click on the wrong, take the wrong um, column. So now it's gone. And when I'm building my model, I may not want to actually expose the, the credit card number because it has very little bearing to uh, the, the customer satisfaction. So I may want to mask this number. So I can click on the credit card number column and scroll down and click on this math data. I can do a custom selection and highlight the part I want to mask. Line. And you see now the data is masked. I have a question. Yes. So you, in the previous step, actually, you may have more than one record meeting the criteria for the, for the filter. So the previous step, removing the records, having the value first, you may have removed more than one record. Correct. So yes. Which, which may be the data loss. Right? Yes. Do you know how many records you have removed? Uh, this this is a sample sample data. So we have twenty around 22 or 23 records only. But, but yes, uh, if, if, you have, if you want to uh, filter this based on a specific record, then there needs to be uh, some, uh, some specific identifier, some unique identifier to that record and filter it out by, by that. And that's a general problem with distributed computing. I mean, that, that, that's really tell you how many, once you do that, that does say, you know, I have removed 22 records or one record or something. I see. I need some kind of a confirmation what mm -hmm. this has done, right? Just, yeah. just in case. Uh, that's, that's in our, in our roadmap to, to provide more of the, 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 the metrics over, over some, some of these operations and also give you like a, the difference before, before and after. Uh, so, so one option is if you think that is another case, then the scale will be the same to another stream. So you can say send to error and you can 
I had generic literature and tried to call me the liquid. So if you think that that first name is another, which is some of that thing, that way you know exactly what is being filtered out and you can go and look at the path of the path. Okay. So now we've done some 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 basic um, basic data preparations, and I just want to take a uh, one-time uh, copy from this MySQL into into Hadoop. So all I need to do is click on ingest data, you can select table, and I'll name this customer data, and just click on ingest data. So behind the scenes, this will actually automatically create a data pipeline to copy the data from, from MySQL into uh, a table while applying some of the, the uh, operations that you, you've applied. So the next thing that I want to do is to actually start ingesting my support, my support tickets. And the support tickets is an export from, from Zendesk, and let's say it's sitting on HDFS. Uh, in, in your local sandbox, it will just use your file system, but on a cluster, it will actually browse through your HDFS directly. So I have the, the file in my desktop. The support tickets is a CSV file. And once I ingest it, I, I see the, the records. And the first thing that I want to do is to parse this, <coughs> this line to be separate columns with uh, comma delimited columns. So I can click on parse a CSV with the delimiter comma, and I want to set the first row as header. Click on apply, and now I don't need this, this body field anymore. I can delete it. And you see in here, now the, the data is parsed. And let's see. So the first thing you might want to do is maybe you might want to remove some, some columns that, that you might not need to, or you might want to keep it consistent and have, have that same ticket. You can click on find and replace and I find the problems and ignore the case and replace this with the word ticket. And now everything says ticket. And the last thing that I want to do is I want to join this data. So right now, the customer ID of uh, the, the tickets is just um, a number. I don't actually know which organization this, this customer belongs to, and I want to create a join so that I can find out um, who's the, the, the parent organization. So I can do a table lookup, and uh, the people on the left hand side can, can see, but at the, at the bottom we have uh, some sort of uh, command line interface where you can do some more advanced uh, <coughs> directives. So table lookup with the, uh, the, the, the column ID, underscore ID, and I need to specify the table that we ingested earlier on, which is customer data, which is the, the dump from MySQL. Enter, and you see at the end that we have all the information come from, from the table. We have the department, we have the email, first name, last name, organization, uh, all pulled in. And it makes things easy to, to do this data preparations in, in a single system. So now that we've prepared the data, Let's create a, a pipeline. So click on create pipeline and we're going to choose a batch pipeline. And in here we've uh, added the, the nodes to, to process the, the file automatically. It's already configured with uh, the, the file path to the, the originating source. Uh, and Wrangler is the, the one transforming the data. And all we need to do is add where this data should, should live after it crosses. So we're going to choose HDFS and we'll name it something and specify the path. Okay. 
and let's name this pipeline ingest support ticket. And we can deploy this pipeline. Yes? What's the value for the system to reduce or something else? Uh, so you can actually choose uh, if let's I can show you this. Uh, if you click on configure, uh, go to engine config, you can actually choose which engine you, you want to run this. So you want PAP to use, uh, that's by, by default is what's enabled. Or if you want to, to do it in Spark, you, it's just one click of a button. Everything will run in Spark. And you can add other custom config as well that will be passed into, into the system. So um, this, this job will run natively in, in Spark. And we do have support for Spark 1 and Spark 2 as well. So going back into the ingest, uh, the ingesting of the support tickets, all we need to do is now click on run. And we'll actually run this, this, this pipeline ingesting and transforming uh, the, the, the support tickets and dumping it into HDFS. We'll take a little bit. And here we also uh, show some, some metrics over what happens in each of the node. Uh, if there's any, what are the, the records that's coming up from, from this particular node, uh, if there's any error, uh, and, and you, can, you can see some kind of very quick metrics. Okay, so now we've ingested the data, we've prepared the data, so now time to build the machine learning code. Why is the difference between 177 and 190? Do you have a data loss? No, so we did we did filter out certain certain records. Oh, right? that's okay. So so that that's where, where the, the drop comes in. And what's happened if you could not find a match between MySQL database and the data? If you could not what, sorry? find a match in a log file versus a database? Uh, so you you can do that in several different things. You can either drop the drop the, the record. You can or filter out what's happening. Yes, or, or you can send it to error, uh, like uh, my colleague mentioned earlier, where on certain condition, I want to send this, this record into some, some error data set, so to, to preserve that, that record. Okay, so now let's build uh, a pipeline that will create a model. The screenshot is doing what you yeah, yeah. So you can you can do operations uh, such as like merge two columns. Like if you have first name and last name, but you want to have full name, you can you can combine the two, or you can do some kind of math operations as well. Uh, so that that uh, a lot of those are already built in. And once the data pipeline is created, if I want to modify and Uh, you can, so you can you can clone the the existing pipeline and then you can do certain modifications. So I'm I'm sorry. So if I create if I clone it, so it's a duplication of the already created data. Uh it's not necessarily. It, it really depends on, on on what type of sync you have, right? Uh, for instance, if you have just have uh, uh, sync with, and you specify the, the unique ID to be the customer ID, it it will override those those customer ID as well, right? Or you could have a, a, a sync where it will just keep adding records. That's possible as well. So it it really, it really depends on on what type of uh, uh, data data sync that you want to put the data in. But if you don't want and you want to be safe, you can truncate the data, uh, the, the the data sets first before you you run the, the next job. Is the data on prem or uh, You can integrate this with, with any uh, any data source. So uh, we have it, it's a pluggable infrastructure. So if uh, it doesn't doesn't come uh, from uh, when, when you download the product, you can 
either find from cast market or you can even build your own uh, your, your own source and, and sinks or, or transform even and and just load it into the system. So it's very extendable. It's uh, making you very very productive really really fast. So let's create the the uh, data the machine machine learning models. So I have existingly uh, pre previously built uh, uh, a pipeline. It's a decision tree model builder, and what it is, it, it just takes a custom Scala code that will run in, in Spark, and it will take uh, the, the input, which will be the HDFS directory that I dump the, the data in, and tokenize uh, the the words of in in, in the tickets, and using decision tree algorithms to, to essentially identify or, or create a classification model over whether this customer is happy or, or not. And uh, at, at the end, so we split, we split the data 80-20s where 80% 80 of, the, of the support tickets will be used to generate the the, the model, and then we use 20% to, to test this model, and it will log out, or it, it, it will process out some of the, the statistics over the position over this, this model. And of course, we, uh, we want the, the position to be as high as possible. So I'm going to deploy this pipeline uh, to live on the model directory and we'll name this decision three classifier. And we we'll click on save and run. So while this is running, it will take some, some time. I want to show you uh, that at this point the the data scientist job is essentially done. They've created the the, the model. So now they need to hand off this pipeline to the IT administrator. The IT administrator needs to take it, this and push it to production. So how do how how can they do that? In here, the data scientist can click on export, and it will generate a, a, a JSON configurations over this pipeline, and the data scientist can export it, download this 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 file. And and just send and just send that file to the IT administrator. All the IT administrator have to do is create a pipeline and just import that file. And everything will already be pre-configured. And then there's also the additional requirements over uh, where in production system, maybe they need to set more resources. If the this pipeline maybe run memory, they need to give more CPU or, or memory. They can they can do that. Or if something goes wrong, for instance, the the IT administrator wants to get an alert right away. They can add an alert in here, and it can send an email on the pipeline failure. And then you can configure this just like writing any other email and put the, the configurations over your uh, email server authentications. And when, when this pipeline is, is run, if it fails, it will send uh, an alert to the, the email that you configured. The IT admin can also schedule this pipeline to run at a certain interval. For instance, they might want to rerun this uh, customer mod modeling every every month. They get fifty thousand new tickets every month, so it might be a good idea to to recreate those models. And they can specify that that schedule very easily from from the user interface. And all they have to do after this is just deploy, it, and that's it. It will it will run in the production environment. So let's go back to this. We see it succeeded. So let's see what the the, the data looks like. 
So we can run explore on this on this data set on this table. And what explore does is essentially it's uh, running a hive job over over the 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 table. So we'll execute this and we'll see the data. <clears throat> so previously I've run other other classifiers. Uh, this with linear regression, logistic regression, naive based, and we can see, we can compare just from this data which which one performed the best. Right? In in this case, naive based performed the best, so maybe they want to use that that model for um, the particular uh, this particular use case. So you see how. It's very easy for, for the data scientists to, to create this pipeline. It's very quick for them to ingest the data, process the data, prepare it, and create models. And they can easily as well ship this solution to the IT administrator. And the IT administrator do not have to do a lot of extra configurations to push it to production. Imagine if the data scientists are using three different systems, one for uh, the first one is to ingest the data, second to, to prepare the data, and third to build the models. That means the IT administrator has to configure three different systems and it just adds that much more point of failure. And we want to, to reduce that kind of risk as much as possible. And in here with, with CDAP, it's all unified in one single, uh, one single platform that it runs the same way in your local machines as it is in, in your production environment in the cluster um, setup. So, uh, question. Yes. Uh, how can we implement CDC logic in preparation? CDC logic? CDC. Uh, so CDC change data capture. We actually uh, have a, a, a video explaining um, CDC. I can I can refer you to, to that after after this talk. Uh, but it's uh, the, the the same the the, the same kind of concept um, where you create data pipelines to, to capture some of that, that change of, of data. Um, it can be achieved with our platform as well. So I, I, can, I can refer you uh, after that. You can, you can chat or uh, you can talk to any of my other colleagues for that. So basically, using CDC logic, uh, we have a solution where you can uh, post your data changes to the Kafka, right? And then in data grid, you can have the Kafka connector, which similar to the database, you can have Kafka connector which reads data and put some sample data in your uh, workspace, and then you can wrap it. Yeah. So that's all for my my demonstrations. And if you're ready to, to try, you can go to our website, cast.co slash get see that. And we support all the, the major distributions, uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks, um, Mapbox is in AWS and Azure. So if you want to try uh, CDAP, you can uh, set it up for your AWS or Azure with just a couple of clicks and you don't have to do extra configuration and get down to business. So that's all I have today. So, thank you. Uh, so, so we have uh, in in our data pipeline, we separated the concept into two different different types. One is batch, and the other is a real time pipeline. Uh, and a batch will either run on a on a schedule like every every week or every day, every hour, whatever it is we specify. But a real time will just continuously run. So you can create a data pipeline to use this model and feed in the customer customer. Um, support tickets as it comes in and just use the, the model to, to classify whether this is um, this is a happy customer or potentially unhappy. Uh, so it's you can you can even create a, a pipeline where you might want to, to process some of the, the tickets first before being fed into, into the model. No, uh, so the 
the, the, the real-time pipeline might just uh, alert or, or put the, the unhappy, unhappy customer into a certain queue that you might want to get an alert on. Um, but the, the model generation runs on a separate pipeline. So that you might, you might run it on a schedule to create, uh, recreate the model uh, every, every month, for instance. There's this, um, if you have to rebuild that every time, model generation for extremely large data that might take several days. Yes? How do you handle versioning with your models? How do I handle versioning? Do you use something like a GitHub repo or something? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Source, source, control. Oh, source control. Source control. How do you use source control? So, because this pipeline is essentially just a, a configuration, so if I click on export here, there's that, that, this file. If you want to check this into GitHub, that's a, that's a, you, you can do that. You can track the, the, the changes over, over this JSON file. Uh, so you can source control it that way. Can you, can you import that also? Yes, oh. yeah, so I can, I can export this pipeline, um, and then let's refresh this page. So I can import, just click on this, and everything is back with the exact same configurations. Any other questions? Yes? How does the data scientist know like, where to save the file in HDFS? Like, you directly enter the location, but mm -hmm. it's not showing any option like, you know, you can store it in this particular location. Right? Sure. Uh, what the data scientist can actually do uh, is instead of specifying the the, uh, the the path as a string, they can set up uh, what we call a macro. So a macro is essentially just a runtime argument that whoever is running the pipeline can specify this path. Uh, so the when the data scientist is building the the pipeline, they don't have to worry about uh, the the location. That will be for for the admin, and the admin can just Set that runtime arguments when they will uh, they will run the program. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much.